what we're going to do here is enable some add-ons. We're going to enable some shortcut keys. We will look at the left and right mouse button selection options. And we'll just switch on a couple of interface enhancements to make life a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here to File, User Preferences. And in the Add-ons tab, what we need to do is put a check mark in the right hand side here in this little box for any add-ons that we want to enable. So the first one here, 3D view, 3D navigation. I'm going to put a check mark here and that will become available then on the tool shelf and I'll quickly run through that later. To find out more about it you can click the drop down menu here and you can click documentation and that will open up a web browser and there's loads of information on it there and that goes for all the add-ons in this list. Okay so you can have a read about it, you can see what it does I'm just going to move that out of the way. Okay, I'm just going to minimize this and I'm just going to work my way down here and enable any of the ones that might be useful for this course. So the next one really is layer management. That's going to allow us just to manage the different objects in the scene so we can add them to layers. The next one is going to be measure it. That will allow us to add measurements to the different aspects of the drawing. Okay, I'm just going to enable the screencast keys for myself and I'm just going to work my way down here and if I see any that might be useful. Another one here maybe is the Archimesh add-on. That's always very useful. Maybe Archipack. Another one here is the Lighting Dynamic Sky. And actually, by the way, that is a procedural lighting for the scene. It's very cool. Okay, and I'm just going to come down a little bit further. So to mesh and loop tools, that comes in handy when we are in edit mode and modeling. Okay, and I'm just going to come, come down here a little bit further. I always like to enable the node wrangler. It's, it's very useful when you're adding material. So it quickly adds in the different nodes. It's one definitely worth checking out. You can read up more about it there. And I'm just going to continue on down here. The next important one is the Pi Menu. So the UI Pi Menu Official. I can expand this. And it just has a list of the different shortcut keys. And they are very useful. And we'll be using them throughout the course. So I'd recommend maybe writing these down. Or taking a screenshot and printing, printing these out. Get used to them. It really speeds up your workflow in Blender. And I'm just going to come down here a little bit further. And I'm just going to enable so both the Blender Cloud add-ons. Okay, it's not too important if you don't have these. These are subscription-based. And you do get access to a load of resources like HDRI images and any projects Blender are currently working on. I think that's it. So I'm just going to come back up to the top here. And the next thing I'm going to do is come over to Input. So by default, Blender's mouse button selection is with right. I'm going to be using left. Okay, so I'll leave it up to yourself whether you want to pick left or right. Just be aware that any time I say left click, it's because I have left select. Okay, the next one is emulate numpad. If you don't have a number pad on your keyboard, this allows you to use the numbers across the top of your keyboard. And I think that's more or less it on this page. The next one is interface. I'm going to enable auto depth. I'm also going to enable zoom to mouse position and that just allows you to zoom to the position of the cursor on screen and rotate around selection when you have an object selected you can just quickly rotate around that object okay and with that done that's more or less it there over here in teams you can change the colors of everything in blender you can modify it an awful lot in this uh, the other one is system if you're using the video editor you can up the memory cache limit here also, if you have a dedicated graphics card, you can switch that on here. Otherwise, I think that's going to do it. Okay, so once all of these changes are made, it's important to click Save User Settings. That way, the next time you open Blender, everything will be saved as it is right now. Okay, so I'm just going to X this down. And I'm going to come over here to the tool shelf, which is the shortcut key T. So you can press T. And over here, if I press N, I get the properties shelf okay i'm just going to come down to the bottom here and start my display okay so again if i press n it, it hides it and the same thing over here 
for the tool shelf if i press t it hides that so i'm going to have a look at one of the add-ons we enabled which was 3d navigation so i'm going to come over here to the display tab and we have a whole host of buttons that came available once we enabled that add-on okay so if you're new to blender this could be a useful resource just if you get lost while you're navigating the 3d view here okay so we have a couple of things we can go into front view and back view and when you switch them you can see up here on the top left it'll tell you the current view you're in we're currently in back perspective there's also an option here for orthographic you can check that here with this one okay that will bring you into an orthographic view and again it'll tell you up here so now if i press the front it'll bring me into a front orthographic okay so you can just switch between perspective and auto. I would say maybe 80% of the time I will be in an orthographic view if I'm in a front or a side or a top. So you can also center the cursor, 3D cursor. So if I right click out here, you can see I place this 3D cursor. If I click center, it'll place it back at the center of the grid or at world zero, the center of the cube there. Okay, you also have some options over here for panning and zooming. But the basics really are, if you press and hold the middle mouse button, this allows you to just orbit around. If you roll the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. If you press and hold shift and the middle mouse button, this allows you to pan. If you press and hold control and the middle mouse button, this allows you to zoom in and out nice and smoothly. Okay, and the different views really are, if I press 1 on the keyboard, it's going to bring me into front. If I press 3, it's going to bring me into right. If I press 7, it's going to bring me into top view. If I press Control 1, it'll bring me into back. And that goes the same for Control 3. It'll bring me into left. Okay. And if I press Control 7, that'll bring me into a bottom view. So that's just a quick way to navigate. And again, you can come over here and just switch between the different views if you want. So we enabled a shortcut add-on. And just to check that it's working, if you press the tab key, you should get a menu like this. Okay, we're currently in object mode. We will be doing most of the editing in edit mode. Okay, so if I just click into edit mode, in here we can adjust vertices. That's what we have selected at the moment. You can switch between vertices, edges, and faces down here. So with faces enabled, I'm able to select an entire face and manipulate it, basically. Okay, the same thing for edges. If I click select an edge, I can then select the different edges. Okay, and just to quickly switch between these, if you press Control tab that will bring up the mesh select mode and you can just quickly select which one you want selected. If I drag this forward but I change my mind, I can press the right mouse button it'll just cancel the current transformation okay that's just a quick run through i'm going to press tab and come back to object mode okay and that's going to do it for this one